Hey guys, it's Patrick. It's uh, Saturday, April 6th, and I'm back here at my parents' garage working on the van again. I'm going to work on the uh, roof rack today, try to get a good chunk of this knocked out anyway. Um, so as you can see, I uh, got the uh, van a little bit torn up here. I hauled some stuff back over to my parents' house, so... Uh, I'm in the process of bringing some stuff back from um, from the place I'm living at now, so uh, it'll make it a little bit easier whenever I decide to get get on the road here. Uh, but it's, it's uh, Christmas time again, yay! So let's see what I got in the mail today. Let's turn on a light for you here. So I got a couple things. Uh, one, I got the Axis Ultimate, they call them PBR uh, now, um, brake pads in stock for the front. Um, I'm going to replace the rears as well, but I'm not going to use a performance brake pad. I'm just going to use a, a decent uh, ceramic brake pad, which should be fine. Um, new rotors for the front, new rotors for the rear. Um, so these are about 100 bucks, um, but hopefully they'll be a uh, they'll be a good uh, upgrade to um, give me a little bit more brake torque when I hit that pedal. Because um, right now you really have to press into it to to make it do anything. And then this guy here over to the right is something that I um, have been doing a lot of research on the internet and trying to find. And I've been trying to find, um, because I have a sealed lead acid battery for the solar system, I can't directly charge it from the alternator or else it could self, it could start gassing. And I don't really want that inside the van. So what this is, get a close up there for you. This is actually meant for boats. And what it does is as your, your motor's running, it will recharge trolling uh, motor batteries. And it puts out 10 amps, a regulated 10 amps from the alternator. I was also told uh, from the manufacturer uh, when I called them that this does have a cutoff so if it won't overcharge the battery. So I'm hoping that's true or else it's gonna kill my batteries. So uh, what this does is I hook it up to the battery here and then once it senses the battery is over a certain voltage, it'll kick voltage back through here and into the uh, solar system battery. And I'm going to have this on a switch, this little purple wire here, it means I can turn it on and off when I want. So I don't have to have it on all the time. Rather, I can use it if my solar system's just not putting enough juice into the battery for some reason, you know, cloudy days, rainy days, whatever. Um, but it'll, uh, it'll allow me to go further on a, uh, a battery charge uh, so I won't run that battery down too low and uh, 10 amps is pretty decent for it to put out this is a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be looking on the internet it looked like it was about about that big um, but so I'll, I'll have to find a spot to mount this and hopefully I can find a spot to mount it in the engine bay I'm not sure it's pretty tight in there um, so I've got a few things I need to do um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it this weekend but I have to change the transmission fluid I'm gonna do two drain and fills to get most of it out I got some uh, Castrol import uh, that said it says it's Toyota T-IV or VI, whatever it is, uh, compatible, which is good. Um, so I'm going to change that out. I got the gasket from Toyota today, um, so that was good. Just three bucks for a gasket for a little washer. Um, also got some parts coming in the mail. Might as well turn this off here. Also got some more parts coming in the mail from Rock Auto. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed you guys, but um, I lost this piece here on the road shortly after I bought the van. It's a fog light cover, and um, I was able to find that Rock Auto had it for about 10 bucks. So it was 10 bucks plus five dollar shipping. Um, so I was able to get that replaced. So I also ordered two spare belts. Um, I ordered one for the power steering and one for the alternator and AC. I ordered an air filter, um, that fog light cover a cabin air filter and a thermostat and I ordered a thermostat just because it's something that I didn't do um, and I'm not going to replace the belts because they look fairly new so I'm going to keep this stuff with me in case something happens where I'll just have it with me whether I have to have a mechanic put it in for me um, if it's too difficult or whether I can do it on the side of the road it's just stuff that I haven't done just like I'm bringing the water pump with me now I won't be able to do a water pump on the road but at least I'll have the part there so um, hopefully a mechanic can do it for me um, but yeah, mostly for today, I'm just going to get going here on the roof rack. Um, I'm hoping to get a decent chunk of it done this weekend. It's supposed to be gorgeous tomorrow. It's supposed to be 70 degrees. Um, so it'll be a nice day to work. Today it's only a high of about 50. Still a nice day though. It's nicer than it has been. It's been raining. Um, but yeah, so let me get back to work and 
I'll update you as always. All right, so a little update as to what's what I've been doing. Um, I don't know if you remember from last time, but I installed these little U bolts here, and um, right now I'm working on security because basically anyone can come up with just a wrench and undo it. So over here welding again with my shitty stick welder, and I made. I'll turn this off for you. I made. Ooh, it's still hot. This little cover here that I can bolt in using security screws. And see if I can do this here. Like so. It'll cover cover the two bolts, the two nuts that go into the U-bolt. And I can just drill and tap and drill and tap and use those little security bolts. That way um, I use these heavy duty uh, bolts or U-bolts whatever they call them, braces, um, to take the load and I can still have the small security bits on either side to prevent people from getting access to the bolts and easily undoing it. So basically what that means is this is going to be a real pain in the ass to remove. Um, and I'm okay with that. You know, it'll probably take 20-30 minutes to get this shit off there. Um, but I'm okay with that. You know, I think the only real time I'm going to want to take it off is if I'm going to be camping somewhere for many days. Um, and I want to get the solar panel off the roof. Uh, the roof box should still be easy to get off because all that is is just a couple of uh, couple of wing bolts inside the box there, so that should be easy to get off. It's the solar panel that's going to be a pain in the ass. So that's good and bad, but um, I either had two ways that I can make it. Uh, I can make it really easy to remove, which means anybody could easily remove it, or I can make it really hard to remove um, for you know, security purposes. So I'm going to go with the hard route, um, which I may regret later, but um, try it out. See what happens. So I'll get back to her. All right, so it's about uh, 45 minutes, an hour later, or something like that. So let me show you where I've gotten so far. So I have, I started to box this in, and instead of using the conduit to have it rest on, I just decided to take another piece and tack it up there. Texel uh, down there at the bottom. I got two of these pieces made up here. So they'll sit like that. Bolt in with the security screws and mean that means that no one can unbolt those. So that's good. And I think the I don't know where the other one went to, but um, but yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what my plan is right now. I'm just boxing everything in and. Um, trying to make it uh trying to make it all look nice but yeah so let me get back to work here and actually what this means uh means i can uh i can slide the well i would have been able to with the conduit anyway i would have, i can slide the solar panel to the middle if i take the roof box off um which would be preferable uh, so that's uh one one advantage uh, but anyway let me get back to her I, I still got one more to go um so hopefully it doesn't take me too terribly long but, uh, yeah, let me get back to work here, so. All right, so we're back about an hour or so later. And uh, let me show you what I've uh, been doing with my craptastic welder here. Um, so, I boxed in the top there. You can see, boxed in the top pretty much all the way down. And this is going to get cut off right here. I just got to wait till I put the box on. Um, this piece right here, I left it open because it'll be covered by the box, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, but the, as I said before, the other end over here will have a removable cover um, that I can just put some security bolts through. And uh, it's like a little plate that'll just prevent people from easily stealing things, which would be nice. So I finished uh, both of them up, and now I just gotta test fit them back on the van. Okay, so it's about uh, 7.30 now, and uh, let me show you where I'm at. So I got everything back up here on the roof. Um, you can kind of see, or well, maybe, everything's boxed in. This piece is removable. Hides the, uh, the nuts there on the top. And I'll just drill and tap through here into the piece of steel on the back and put some security bolts in there. That'll be here on the inside there 
and then you have to take that off remove those two nuts the same on the other side um, but the other side the other side doesn't have a plate it's just got a front piece here that covers so you can't get access to the nuts from the back here or the front and it's covered by by the roof box here um, so that's just so no one can take it off first you'd have to take the first thing in order to remove the roof rack is taking the, the box off and you do that from the inside there's some wing nuts on the top there and you take them out um, two 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 so eight um, and you pull these flaps down take the top off and then you can get access through the top to these nuts here so it's kind of a pain in the ass but again I did that on purpose so you got these little plates here welds aren't the best but it should hold pretty pretty strong there so I got everything boxed in nice flat flat areas for the the box and the solar panel to to rest on um, so I still got to go to Home Depot get the security bolts and same thing little cover there we go so, so that'll be be security bolts through here and on the inside there and it's uh, it's coming along. I'm so I don't know if you as you figured out. I'm gonna have to actually put this roof rack on uh, with the solar panel. So the solar panel will be bolted to the rails first. So I'm gonna have to make some marks and get everything lined up. And then I'm gonna put the two rails and the solar panel on top of the car at the same time. At least that's the thought. And um, and then I can tighten up the U-bolts to the roof rails. So again, it is kind of a big pain in the ass to get this on here but I think that's good um, at least for security yeah, when it comes to camping and I want to take this thing off could be a little bit of a pain in the ass so uh, I'm not sure how much more work done tonight I'm gonna do tonight I might go out to dinner here soon but uh, I'll get back with you okay so it is now hour and a half or so later it's almost nine o'clock and um, I got everything kind of dry fitted up here. So I was I did what I was talking about, and I bolted the solar panel to the frame first, and then I slid the whole thing up on the top here, and bolted in these U brackets. And then after well, first I tightened the ones down the solar panel, and I tightened these down on the main roof rack, and then. I slid the roof rack on here, or the roof box on here. As you can see, it looks pretty good here. Sorry for the light. Shaking it back and forth here. Looks pretty secure. Here too. And the same with the solar panel. So this is just a dry fit. So the car's moving can't tell because I'm jiggling the camera but so yeah um, I am pleased with this um, so the next step is I think I'm going to well, let's head back over here uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna paint it first or because it's supposed to be really nice for perfect painting weather but as if you remember from a couple of videos ago I said that I was gonna build a brace that I can add, uh, screw in very simply uh, that goes from here up and over and back down and that's just so I can temporarily carry, sur carry surfboards or kayaks or whatever I want to I may not do that tonight uh, plus I have these holes drilled already um, so I may just forego that um, for tonight um, and work on um, getting this all prepped for painting tomorrow and uh, making a cover out of a tarp for this uh, for the solar panel and that's just so when I'm in the city I can quickly cover it um, and prying eyes will hopefully not see it um, but yeah for now so for now I'm pretty satisfied with the uh, with the way the roof rack is turning out it was a lot of planning and very difficult just as it was for the bed um, but uh, hopefully it works. So tomorrow I hope to do some painting on the roof rack and um, maybe wire up some solar stuff. 
So um, this might be it for tonight. I think for the rest of the night, I'm going to just kind of do a quick sand down on the roof rack, get it all prepped up to go um, for painting. And um, and yeah, so it's been a, I had a good half day in here, so I'm pretty tired. I did a lot of welding today. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty happy with the way the roof rack turned out. So uh, I think until tomorrow. See ya.